Awesome. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Ariana. Hi. 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 Uh, so let's start off by, could you each tell me a little bit about your characters? Sure. Tina is, um, uh, she's been at the office for about 10 years. She was there with Doug when they started it. Um, like fresh out of high school, met him, didn't go to college or anything. She just linked up with him and found a place where she could have a lot of autonomy and even though she was his secretary, she could voice a lot of her ideas and um, kind of be the boss behind the scenes. Um, but she's like the grounding force at the office and keeps everything together. Um, Bambi used to be a centerfold model and now she's moving behind the camera and sort of finding her voice um, in that role because she used to just be seen as an object and now she's sort of owning a little bit more about uh, her power, I'd say. Yeah. What attracted you guys to the project to begin with? The writing. I just thought the writing was really funny. Um, I thought that Ellen is, Ellen, our creator is brilliant. And I liked that it was dealing with all of these different topics in such a fun, funny way. And I just thought the characters were really funny. Like I thought each of the characters were, um, very well sort of written and, and um, I liked their voices and I was excited about uh, the kind of actors that could come together to do it. And I, I got even more excited when I saw who the cast was. So yeah, I'd say the right. Same, I, I just, I love the dynamic between Joyce and Doug and then all of the characters in the office, like the way Tina and Doug interact is really special. And then, um, yeah, I just like an office comedy um, yeah. and I love a period comedy so it's uh like being set in the 70s is like such a cool great way to have escapism but still <laughs> touching on topics that are still relevant today mm -hmm. for sure um you guys had talked about it being set in the 70s how did you prepare for that did like you do research before did you have like a favorite fashion trend or outfit that you wore on the show yeah, I mean, beforehand, I, I liked that when I spoke with them and we talked 70s, like usually, you know, as a black woman, like when we talk 70s, it's usually fro, you know, which, you know, I, I love to wear in my natural everyday life. Um, but when it but when we were talking about doing 70s and they were like, you know, we want to kind of go a different route with her. Um, we don't think she's sort of that woke yet. You know, it's like early 70s. It's before that movement in a way. And Tina's character isn't that. She's not, she doesn't consider herself an activist. Um, she's just like living and likes what she likes. And so um, it'll be interesting to see as, you know, this, if, if we are lucky enough to get future seasons, like as it progresses, like what happens as the times are affecting each of them. I think we see a lot more of that in Bambi in the first season of like Joyce's views really having an impact on her. Um, but Tina is pretty much who she is. And I, I love the fashion, like Tina's jewelry is incredible. All, all of her pieces were really amazing. And I, I, um, I, I just thought the colors, like getting to do wear a lot of those colors again were, were really fun. Same, um, I feel like the fashion in the seventies is like so interesting and like the patterns they use and the colors are incredible. And it just really gives a really layered artistic um like sheen to this really funny heartfelt comedy um mm -hmm. where it's just like damn that's a sexy outfit and it's it's <laughs> like funny to see how trends return um and yeah th it's just uh I had to google what this was because I'm too old but it's like a vibe shift like I definitely had a vibe <laughs> shift from my COVID outfits because I was <laughs> like yeah. exclusively wearing my uh boyfriend's sweatsuits <laughs> <laughs> and then go wearing almost next to nothing was truly a shock to my system <laughs> yeah I mean I love especially the men's fashions too like I think oh that yeah like seeing men all dressed up like wearing fit more tight you know, like tighter pants tighter you know shirts and like of all body types wearing it you know that was really fun and them wearing jewelry, that was really fun as well. Yeah, yeah. Jake wears the like leather pants in yes. like, the finale, like many, uh, let's be honest, many pairs of leather pants. And whereas yeah. women are constantly aware of their size, 
mm-hmm. 70s male fashion forces them to be aware of their size. Yeah, and he's exactly. like, he's like, I can't gain 30 pounds between seasons because right. these leather pants literally can't get up my legs <laughs> right. if I gain an ounce. Right. Yeah, for sure. I also noticed, and you guys had touched on this before, was that even though this show is set 50 years ago, a lot of the issues that your characters are dealing with or what the world is dealing with is happening 50 years later. Could you touch a bit more about that and how you hope the show adds to present day conversation or even how your own experience influenced the show that is said in the past? Um, we were, we were, talking about how um it's sort of like reflected like even though it's set 50 years ago it's reflecting current state of affairs um in addition to the women's uh equality movement which were a hundred percent not there uh, mm-hmm. as far as having like equality between the sexes um something that's interesting that's playing out currently is the freedom of press and mm-hmm. how that's being suspended in russia and how uh a body of people can't move freely and democracy can't work if press is suppressed. And so it's interesting to see these conservatives in the seventies trying to quiet this voice of having like an erotic women's magazine that needs to be taken down because it's going to affect society. Um, Press needs to be free, like, like point blank. And, uh, it's just, that's interesting to see how that's affecting like the people of Russia. Yeah, it is. And it, it is interesting to see that that is um, a tool that's always been used for people who want to remain in power or take power. Um, and um, I think that that parallel of looking at, you know, men having been in those positions and saying like the way that we can suppress women is to just really quiet their voice. I mean, the, the, even the trailer like immediately goes into that topic of her, you know, really going to these male publishers and saying, Hey, women, these are, this is what women want to hear or see and um, talk about and living in a time when at the time they were saying, we don't even think women want this. We don't even think women are interested. That's how much they had suppressed women's voices. I think that today we have so many platforms to get our own voices out And so you kind of can't do that um, because there is this ability to raise awareness around anything. But I think that there's still, you can still see in different ways, more insidious ways, ways that people try to suppress um, people's voices. And I I definitely see that parallel in the show. Yeah, even with Joyce, who um, is seen as super liberal, like the first time she comes in, she like kind of questions your role Adira in there and immediately asks for coffee and she's right. actually surprised how intelligent Bambi is. It's interesting to see kind of her journey of checking her own biases. Yeah. Um, and even though the show, what I've noticed when watching, even the, though the show is about an exotic magazine and there's tons of nudity, it doesn't seem sexualized at all. Like you guys were saying, it's kind of like a workplace comedy. How was yeah. that like to film? Honestly, like, <laughs> I mean, the difference between when we started and when we left, I, I mean, I would walk into the office and when we first started, there would be like dildos around and like women walking, like a gaggle of women walking by naked. And it added to the humor in a way, because it's like all these different bodies, all these different shapes, and you get really used to everyone. By the time we wrapped, I was like, that's old hat. Like every time I'd see a nude person, I was like, whatever, you know, Yeah. (laughs) like I just didn't even notice it after a while, to be honest. Um, And I love that the show does that. It like deals with our bodies as they are. It doesn't have to be a sexual thing. We just were existing, you know? Yeah. Bodies are silly. Body parts are funny and silly (laughs) and diverse and different shaped. And so it was, it's like very refreshing to, sort of just get comfortable with it just through like the sheer amount of exposure we had yeah. um and seeing like all these prosthetic penises like <laughs> at first it was like oh oh my oh my god and then that was like yeah yeah, yeah I've seen that one before yeah please. like it's wild <laughs> and I will sure. say audiences should definitely notice there is this group of women background actors that play like our models in the 
at Bottom Dollar who are amazing, really smart, funny women. But what I loved is that each episode, they would wear a theme from the previous episode and be like this like Easter egg in the background, like, you know, walking by. And they were, they became one of my favorite parts of the show every time I come in. Yeah, they're crazy. Yeah, they had, they, they were like, uh, Randy Republic, they were like horny Republicans. <laughs> there was like a bunch of bunnies and a magician. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I it, it was great <laughs> well thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and um fingers crossed for a season two thank, thank you so much okay. thank you so much have a good one you too. Okay.